Hi there, Scary Gary here. Sure glad you guys came back. Guess what we're going to talk about this week? We're going to talk about our trip to go up and pick up our little puppy and give a little bit of a sneak look at him again on uh, the end of the episode. The trip to go up there was almost 700 miles. And Google tells me it ought to be almost 11 hour trip. So we left about 6 in the morning, and if Google's correct, we ought to be there about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, most of the time, Google in a trailer, they don't really work out. But since we got the three-quarter ton Ram, I've been pretty much keeping up with what the Google says. We thought we'd get up there about 5, have a nice little evening. Unfortunately... We were about 30 miles south of Muskogee in Oklahoma, and guess what? I got a blowout. Now, my tar monitor system did not tell me we had a blowout. Specifically what happened was we're going down the road, a semi is starting to get off at an exit. Just as he's starting to get off, he's like almost even with us, and kabam! And Mary Lou looks over and says, either we had a blowout or he had a blowout. I looked at the tire monitoring system. It was all reading good. So I says, great. So I looked kind of in my rear view mirror and I saw some stuff flying up from underneath the trailer on the passenger side. So immediately pulled off the side of the road. Right there, it was a four lane road uh, going up, I think 60, it was 69, a pretty busy road. And I pulled off on the shoulder. Of course, my rear tire, it was blown. And I looked up underneath the trailer, and this is what I saw. It had virtually eaten almost through the bottom of the trailer into the section underneath the refrigerator. Now, luckily, you know, that area, it, it's not, you know, if it would have went all the way through, it's not like being in the center of your trailer. But still, it was like, it, and I guarantee you, it was at the most one mile from when we heard the blowout to when we pulled off the side. So I go ahead and started to change the tire out. And Mary Lou says, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We got AAA. So she called AAA. They said, okay, we can get somebody out there in about 30 minutes. Unfortunately, it took quite a bit longer than 30 minutes. Um, it was a good situation that I didn't change it myself, but unfortunately it got to the point where it was getting close to four o'clock before we actually got finished. And then we had to drive into Muskogee. I changed the tire out to a new tire and then we drove the rest of the way to Mansfield. Now, I'm glad the AAA did it, honestly. First of all, I don't have to do the work. I'm not glad that it took them so long, but I thought, oh, I can do this and whatever. Here's the scenario. I would have had the thing up on probably my Anderson uh, block, which would have raised it up, and I would have been able to get the other tire off of it. But in, in normal situations, it would be probably pretty good, but I'm off on the shoulder of a road. And this is what's really bad is when that thing's on that Anderson, that block's about this big and the tire's probably about this big. So, it, you know, and every time a semi or even, even a pretty good truck would go by, guess what happened to the camper? So it's probably a lot better situation that AAA came and then they actually had a hydraulic jack that was able to lift it up and they changed the whole thing out, even though it took a while. Some of the reason why we probably had the blowout, it was hot. And I have read some stuff and saw some videos that you really shouldn't go faster than 65 miles per hour with a trailer tire. And on the, on the original Loretta, we pretty much kept at that. I very seldom ever went over 65 because I was driving with the F-150 and you just really couldn't go much faster than that because you just couldn't control it and you just didn't feel safe. But when I had the three quarter ton, the Ram, going basically at the speed limit or above, and many times that did exceed the 65 miles an hour and I probably wore those tires out. We're going to have some videos on repairing the bottom of the trailer, of course. We're going to have some videos on 
possibly a way that it's not going to tear up the bottom of the trailers and definitely a video on a new tire monitoring system one that that works we didn't make it to mansfield at five or even six or even seven or even eight it was probably about almost getting 9 30 before we got to mansfield so and we stayed in the Laurel Ingalls Wilder RV Resort. It's a nice little bitty campground. Mansfield, Missouri is a little bitty town. I, I, I'll look the population up later, but it's very small. But I didn't realize that that was the, the area where Laurel Ingalls Wilder wrote all of her little house on the prairie, a little little house in the big wood all of her books were written in mansfield missouri and she lived there until her death in 1957 and they've actually set up a little museum right beside this campground thus the laurel ingles wilder rv park uh it's missouri it's rather hilly matter of fact i mean the site itself where our trailer set it was level but immediately off the edge of the gravel it was going down hills it's like you know you're sitting on a pretty good slope and when our steps went out matter of fact i had to put some of the lego leveling jacks or blocks i had to put those underneath the corners of the step because even when i had the steps all the way extended it still wasn't hitting the ground without those blocks but it was a nice little campground i mean they i think i paid 40 a night because of we did have 50 amp they charged a little more if you have 50 amp versus uh if you had 30 amp or possibly even just 110 um the people were super nice i mean they called i called them whenever we had this blowout and then said hey is i need to do anything special and they says no 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 you just we'll just we'll come by tomorrow we'll pick up your money and things like this so the next then they actually even called me later on, just said, everything okay? You're still kind of making things like, oh yeah, it's still it's going to be 9.30 to 10 when we get there. Um, checkout typically is at noon, but they told me just, oh, don't worry about it. When you get out whenever you, you know, if you can, you know, and just, uh, so the next morning I didn't run into the camp post until after we picked up Finley, but I did go around the campground a little bit, took some pictures and, uh, they had, they had chickens. Matter of fact, that's what I kind of woke up to was hearing the rrr, rrr. problem. I had trouble finding the sewer because I thought they had a, they, it was covered by a rock instead of a cap or something. And, and of course, I'm, we are talking, it's pretty darn dark when I was out there, you know. And, uh, but besides being hilly and uh, did not go in the bathhouse for COVID time still and things, I don't even know if it was open. The campground says there was a cave. It'd been nice if we'd spend some more time to maybe look around at a little bit more. And Mansfield's not terribly far from Springfield, about, oh, I think it's about 40 minutes, 40 miles. And then several other cities pretty close. So it's kind of a nice little place maybe to go. Which brings me to what I always ask is, would I come back here? Yeah, I'd come back there. Especially, you know, if, if it would be a, a place that if it's on the route and things... Let's talk about the Laurel Ingalls Wilder part a little bit more. I did go over to the uh, the museum. I, they were opening up right at nine, and I could have possibly went in there. Uh, there wasn't. There was like one car in the parking lot, so I assumed it was probably just the people working there. I grew up in Missouri, and we covered the books when I was in grade school, and I had no idea that she actually lived and wrote the books and passed from Mansfield, Missouri, which wasn't that far away from where I lived. Well, here's the part we've all been waiting for. Here's Finley. Jenkin. Who you got, Nana? Today. Have to drive all the way to 
Sorry to get him, but we got him. What's dampening, Mary Lou? Climbing like a cat. They call cat baby. They call them cat dogs, okay. don't they? It's okay. Just where are you gonna go? But we did the absolute thing. We wanted to go, go there and pick somebody up at 10 o'clock this morning. And he's been a little bit of a hoot, right? I don't know why I'm talking. Probably everybody just wants to watch Finley, right? Well, they can't see much of him. <laughs> Next stop is Durant, Oklahoma. Going to spend the night right beside the uh, casino. Dog dog casino. Well, say bye bye, Mary Lou. Bye. Say bye bye, Finley. <laughs> like an egg cat. Say bye. It's okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. What's he trying to do? Just get real close to yes. you? Yes. All right. All the life. Well, I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope we I hope we can survive Finley for the next week, and I sure hope to see you next week. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Turn on your post notifications. Click the comments down below. Subscribe, and you'll make me happy. <laughs>